everybody. Now, for those of you who have been following me, you have noticed that my YouTube is filled with all kinds of randomness. But about a year ago now, I did some ghost hunting work. I hadn't done it in a while, but I had an opportunity to work with a bunch of equipment and gain a bunch of equipment, which I then lost, sadly, when the job went past its criteria. So, I'm going to do a little bit of a review. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the spirit radio. Let's see here. I'm going to look at this. Yes. The ITC research device PSB-70 Spirit Box. Put it somewhere on a little thing. Point is, now this is a very simple tool. It rotates through radio frequencies. You can choose the speed, the pulse, you can mess with it and you learn. There is no real exact how-to because it's different for each person who handles the device. For some people, they don't even get anything from using these because they're just that's just not what they're used to, much less the time it takes to actually get the ear for it because you're, it's bouncing between ambient radio signals, what's picking up, right? And it's spacing it with white noise that you change and can mess with to find what works best for your ear and speed, allowing you to find out which one, which combination works best for you. That is why a lot of people will pick these things up and then be like, it's useless, such as the person who was working with me in my last ghost hunting project. They immediately were like, this thing's useless, what, what did I buy it for? And I was like, I didn't, one, did not tell them to buy, but they bought everything they could off Amazon that was ghost hunting related. So I got a chance to get hands on a little bit of, you know, like use and figure out the theories behind them. And I got about four to five months of hard use out of them where every single night we were using them in some way. It was intense for no reason. Uh, well, there was reasons, but it was just very intense usage of these devices. And the spirit radio, for me, I needed it at a slow with a longer white noise in between. By doing that, it made it easier for me to differentiate the moments where it's a radio and white noise and be able to see if I feel I hear anything in those in-betweens because that is what you're trying to do you're trying to see if there's any chance as the theory is that they're utilizing these wavelengths to try and bend mm -hmm. them so that they, we can hear them All right and for those who want it in the whole description is a whole history lesson All right, a whole little chunk of info for those who really enjoy it, but um, I'm not going to be able to just kind of info dump on you guys at this time in that way. So the Spirit Radio, I liked it. I liked the fact that you could easily connect it to a recording device and record what it was picking up, and you could wire it very easily to pick up what you were saying at the time that it was recording the radio. Without much, without any real feedback or loss of quality in my mind, um, I was using an H4 Go Pro, um, an H4 Pro, not Go Pro, geez, right? But those things pick up great. So you just pop it into its input, you get it going, you use it, that easy. Um, I, I recommend it as something to try if you get the chance. They are pricey. They are not cheap. None of this equipment is cheap. Um, next, all right, the next thing I wanted to give a quick one on is the EMF device he picked up. 
that I had a chance to use. That thing was good. That was nice. I liked its um, EMF. Right. I liked it. I thought it was it, it did well. Um, it had a hold. You could. It was very simple and intuitive. Um, also pricey, but the EMF for me, the handheld EMF readers, right? Those are really good for finding when you when, when you switch everything off in the house and you just straight switch it all off, right? And you walk around the house. You're not doing anything yet. You're not calling. You're not responding. You're you're just giving it a walk and vibe, right? You're getting the the feel of a place. That thing is great for letting you know if there's still something on. It will pick up. It will pick up your equipment. If you get it too close, um, it doesn't pick up people. You, you can touch it to your head. You can touch it to yourself. It's never going to give you a reading in that way. Um, but it will pick up through walls if there's still a hot wire. It will let you know if a breaker is still on for some reason. It will let you know if there is a speaker in the wall. It will let you know. It it will let you know electronics are nearby, um, and it takes practice and it takes experience. So you got to play with it, and that's the problem with a lot of these tools. They are expensive, and you need time to play with them. You need time to experience them before you can really say yay or nay. To say, hey, this is a ghost. This is a field. This is a breaker box. That's a light switch. So you, when you have an EMF, I recommend going through your whole, whole house and seeing what, taking an average, what does my light switches come as? What does it tell me when I put it next to my light switch? What does it tell me when I put it next to my breaker box? My microwave? My cell phone? Get those numbers. Because otherwise, you don't really know what you're looking at. You need those numbers before you can walk around and tell if something is something. You need the baseline before you can figure out a fluctuation. Simple, right? How can you tell something's fluctuating if you don't know a baseline? You don't. <laughs> and that's just a simple tool, but it's very pricey. I mean, I think there's some phones now that boast being able to pull off EMF readings, but we'll see. No, the REM pod is the next little device. REM pad. Laura Palmer. Uh, the REM pod. So the REM pod was handy. Now the problem with the REM pod that I see immediately is not with the device, not with its theory, not with the concept of the REM pod. It's monetary. <laughs> One REM pod is not enough. You need. I feel like I'm. I'm. Like, I'm not sponsored. I don't even have the REM pod I was once using. It's gone. I don't have any of my ghost hunting equipment anymore, sadly. So now I am without any of my... I lost all of my ghost hunting equipment, so I don't have anything anymore. You need six. <laughs> you need six REM pods. You need six of those suckers. One, two, three, four, five, six. You need six of them. Because you need, like, you need to be able to place them throughout the location so that if you do detect something, you can tell if it's moving around or if it's in a single location. Because if you have to enter a location to move the REM pod, you're disturbing the room. So you're better off, and let's say you're doing, you're focusing everything for this, for like, we're like, hey, we're hitting systematic, we're hitting rooms at a time, and then we're doubling back whatever your process is for investigation. So, I had to move the location. Now, as I was saying about the REM pods, you need multiple of them so that you can set them up in whatever spaces you're not investigating currently. That way, if you're in the middle of investigating the master bedroom and it starts going off in the living room where no one is you can at least have 
some documentation of that activity and a clue to investigate that area more thoroughly. What is rough is these suckers are like 150 each. And like I said, you, you minimum I would recommend having three of them. That is a lot. That is a big investment to what for some people is just a hobby. Hands. So, what are you gonna do? That's why it is best to see if you can team up with a group of people who can pool. Now, that is even a bit more difficult because you have to... My little man. See, that can make things a little more difficult when you're needing to pool funds. So, this equipment is not cheap. It is made for your convenience. As always, you're paying for convenience. You could attempt to create your own of these devices. It is not necessarily easy to do unless you already know what you're doing. Because most ghost hunting devices have been repurposed. They started as one thing, but came another. They began meant for electrical work, and now they're being used for ghost hunting. That doesn't make them cheaper. You can buy the ones meant for electrical work. They're going to cost more because lives are at stake when it comes to electrical work. The REM pod works similar to a theremin. Those things are difficult to set up. It also sends you light signals that at least lets you know depth of interaction and other cues. You don't get those with homemade devices unless you really know what you're up to. And if you do, document it, man. Definitely document it. The gatekeeping on ghost hunting is in the equipment and in the knowledge baby man so check out the description which has some nice and interesting information on all these devices in a way the theories and behind them and if you start doing anything on your own document it share it like follow and subscribe you know all that <laughs> till next time